Hey everyone, Chris Haddon, Jason Balin, owners of hardmoneybankers.com here with another show. Today we are talking about how to outmarket your competition so that you don't have to compete on price. If you don't know already, you should think of yourself and your company as a marketing company first. We got some really cool stuff to go over and we're gonna really enjoy it. Check it out right now. Guys, believe me when I say it is much, much better to outmarket your competition so that you don't have to compete only on price. A lot of the people out there in whatever industry, I mean, you could be a real estate agent, you could be an investor, you could be a lender, you could be a lawyer. When the phone rings and it's a, a prospect, a potential client, oftentimes the first thing they're gonna ask about is price. Right? Well, that's how, the first thing they know the what to ask. It's the only thing they know what exactly. to ask. Exactly. If they don't know you, you're just another you know, website, you're just another you know, phone number they can call. That's the first thing that they're going to ask about, unless they already know you, unless you're bringing them in through other channels, unless they want to work with you for being an expert, for being whatever. And believe me, it's a much, much better place to be than just a service provider that quotes price. Exactly. And you know, we spend a lot of time and attention on training our staff and our salespeople to overcome, to overcome that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying that price matters. I truly do believe that, you know, some, some, does, pe course, some people will walk on you over yeah. a, f a few bucks and you lose those people, you lose those people. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about kind of, you know, the, the, the majority of the ones who really care about you and relationship and doing business with people mm -hmm. that that they, they believe, um, you know, tr truly care about them. Uh, but some of the things that we talk about is, sure, I'm happy to quote you a price, but a quite, price is irrelevant at this stage of the game. Let's try to figure out exactly what your goals are and what you're trying right. to, to accomplish. Because, you know, the price can be free, the price can be $10,000 uh, or somewhere in between. But let's figure out first what you want to accomplish. Yeah. So, um, and, and one of the reasons in our lending company, we don't really have what we call loan programs because everybody's different. And let's figure out what you're, what you're looking to accomplish. Are you trying to put less money into the deal or higher, you know, more money in the deal? Are you trying to make this profit or this profit? So you know, it, it, all, it all kind of really just depends uh, on the situation and we try to you know, get talking, get conversations going, build a relationship, understand that, you know, yeah, uh, you know, maybe you found me on the internet, but we're a real company, we're not a robot, and you know, let's just talk and get to know each other. Right. Yeah, and, that, and that's how to handle the call when it comes in, right? Because there's different stuff that goes on, but there's different things that you can be doing to bring people your way in the first place. For example, a friend of mine is a defense attorney, and he recently won a high-profile case near uh, where we live here, and of course, you know, like as he should, he took the news story that was coming from the results of that trial and putting it everywhere he could. He's viewed as an expert. If yeah. somebody needs a defense attorney for something bad that happened, he's a great one to call. That's what's important that he's really good at it, that it's been documented in the media. And so when people call him on the phone, it's not just about price, it's about, I know that you're great at this. Yeah. Right? Um, and they probably won't even ask him price. Like that's their last question to ask. Yeah. They're just gonna say, I want like, you I because you you're an me. expert. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> I need, need you to save me. me. Right, and that's an extreme <laughs> example because it's a you know, high profile defense, you know, that doesn't apply to most people being in that situation, hopefully not. Yeah. Um, but another great example that we come across a lot recently is um, the, the new real estate brokerage models that are coming into the space. Cut rate, they have tech stuff involved, lower on service, and they're undercutting the competition. We yeah. have a lot of real estate agent friends and, and associates. Um, but the agents in a traditional model can still win, and they still are. The ones that are doing it right, that are building the database, that are visible in their social, that are taking their wins, like their big listings sold, their comments on the market, whatever it may be, and really putting an effort on content, putting the content out to their world, seen as an expert. People want to work with them. People want to, you know, they can be personable. They can be an expert. Like whatever yeah. you have to put your best foot forward, do that, and people will want to work with you for that. They're not going to call up and say, "Oh, you're going to do a five and a half percent listing, but Redfin's going to do it." Whatever. Exactly. That doesn't become the conversation. The conversation already skips to, all right, let's get this thing done. I know you're awesome. I know, yeah, exactly. You've, it's already been, it's not even like a cold lead at that point. Like by the time they even get to you, it's a warm lead. Super they warm. called you directly instead of somebody else mm -hmm. because they saw your marketing piece. This Just person like said them about the, yeah, this person may have said something about them. They, you sold the next door neighbor's house. I mean, any business got to be treated like a marketing business. And we talk about that all the time. And there's so many newer real estate investors that come in to our office that, that we talk to typically because they're looking for loans. And like you need to treat this like a marketing company. And I mean, think about it like this. Yep. If, if, if everyone's chasing around like two or three leads and you lose one of them or two of them, 
you know, that's a lot of potential profit and deals off the table. But if, if you know, you have two or three and I got 10, you can just take your two or three because I got all these other ones over here. So yeah, you can do you know, what you want to do. Yeah, you that. cherry pick the you cherry pick the ones that you want. The deals, um, clients, or whatever it may be. So, so I don't think we've ever really been too concerned about the national hard money lenders invading our space, or the large tech realtors, or even some of the the larger kind of uh, you know cut rate home buy, you know home buyers or whatever whatever the case is in some of the spaces that we're in. Because number one, some of that stuff's short winded. Number two. You know, try to have a real conversation with you know somebody who's local market driven and knows a zip code. If you're a real estate agent or knows a yep. neighborhood, compared to somebody nationally that says, "Oh well, you know, my number one thing on my marketing piece is um, you know, whatever, ten and two, price wise, and you guys are slightly higher, so I'm going to get all the business. It's baloney." And yeah, they may score that somewhere, but you know, you they're don't have to do it that way. You know, you don't have to compete in that way. Exactly. Um, I mean, you can you can be the cheapest in town. Like you can you know cut your margins and you know do it on the like that's one way to do it. Yeah. And this is and, enough. And and our biggest resource and and you know, you know you guys that are following us, we obviously appreciate it. And who have who have followed us, you realize we're very consistent on these content pieces on the marketing channels that we're doing for yeah. a purpose. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in our lending world, to give you a little bit of insight of what we try to do, we try to take real estate investors who have done two or three deals and try to turn them into full-time investors and do twelve deals a year. And the reason we do is we want more loans out of them, and we help them, and they're everybody. and they're loyal to Good us. We we're doing we do a lot of content. Uh, yes, we do obviously a lot of marketing, but a lot of our marketing is tailored to content. Come to our website and learn about this, or learn about this, or get this for free, or get this for free. It's, it's you know it's a big passion for us, and it really backs out. And it doesn't matter really any business you're in. This works in, mm -hmm. um, but you know the ones that we're, we're talking about on this today is you know real estate agents, lenders, home buyers. Um, anything kind of in the, the real estate retail or real estate investing world. Yeah, absolutely applies to everyone. And here's the best part about it. If you do decide to put some effort towards your content marketing, writing a blog post, making a video like this, doing a podcast, whatever it may be, the good news is 90% of your competition isn't doing it. I was just <laughs> on a podcast this morning and we were talking about uh, content marketing and the person was in the tech space in, um, you know, not the same kind of industry as us, not real estate, not whatever. But it's absolutely the same thing. Most of your competition either isn't doing content or they're not doing it well. Yeah. You know, like there there are lenders that compete with us that put out um, marketing stuff, but it's it's very generic. Sometimes it's talking about price. Sometimes it's just no more than like, hey, look at this loan we closed. Yeah, that's not marketing. And, and, I, and I'm always like, it's like what do you do? <laughs> you're a lender and you closed a loan. What do you do? That's it, all you can come up with. That's as creative as you are. That's yeah. as much value as you have to give to the audience. Uh, yeah, and the good news is that's what your competition is doing. Uh, crappy marketing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And the other thing is the interesting thing. While you were on that podcast, I had an investor that was here that I was talking to about some opportunities, and he actually had another hard money lender in mind. Another hard money lender that's quoted him that has a quote from it. He has a property under contract that he's supposed to settle in in a week. And the reason he came into the office to meet is he wanted somebody local. He wanted an expert. He's been following us for a long time. I've never met him, uh, but he reached out and said, "Hey, I, you know, I, I'd like to meet you guys. You, you guys have a meetup group. I see your 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 TV, sh your web show that you're doing. You guys are experts in the market. I have a loan quote from somebody um, from New York who, and another one from somebody from North Carolina who are both national lenders who have just localized reps that, you know." You know, he was attracted to them originally, and he even admitted he was like, "I was attracted to them because they were slightly cheaper than some of the local lenders." But then I come right. to sit down with you, and I'm like, "For a few thousand bucks, you almost you could have saved my life." Um, we sat down, we took the whiteboard out, we went through some of the numbers, and I was like, "I hate to tell you this, man, but like these numbers don't work. Like you should walk away from this deal. Like you know, if you want to do this deal, <laughs> you can do it with that other lender if you want, but I don't think you should do it." And you know, just I don't want to do a loan. I don't want to do a loan for you either on it because I think you're going to lose money on this deal, and you know, I don't want you to be pissed off at me because you lose money on a on a deal, and then we never get to do business again. Or I don't want you to do this deal um, because then you're probably going to get out of the business if you lose money on your first deal. You say that real estate's not for me. So, <laughs> but going back, the reason he found us, and obviously, I'm sure I scored more brownie points with him because I told him not to do a deal, um, or we wouldn't even give him the money on the deal. Let some, you know, someone else would. You know, you get a lot out of it. So stay personal, outmarket your people. We've done lots of shows on small pipeline syndrome, which we like to talk about. Which hey, you have a, topic. yeah, you have a small pipeline, and you get desperate, and you make bad decisions because you only have one or two deals, and one of those falls out, and 
you know, you run yourself into real problems. So if you're doing this on a regular basis and you're consistent with it and you're serious about it and you, you know, just create more followers, you know, that it kind of will turn into not having small pipeline syndrome. <laughs> there you go, guys. Put effort towards your content, win on marketing, not on price. It's gonna result in a much, much better business no matter what industry you're in. That's right. All right, good stuff. Good show today, guys. Uh, please check us out on any social media, hashtag the REI360 show. Um, hit up our Facebook, uh, Facebook forward slash hardmoneybankers, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Take care.